So good afternoon. Um, my name is Charlene, and today I'm going to go over um, basic infection control of the radiology room. We will also go over how to um, how to use the dexter and also the computer. We'll go over uh, all of the personal protective equipment that we use that we need to wear as well. And as well, we are going to go through bite wing placement and PA placement. So the objectives are just written out on the whiteboard. And, uh, and after that, you'll get a chance to practice on the Dexter, and then we'll go through some questions if you have any after that. Okay? Right. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to go through the entire infection control procedure in the radiology room, starting with your personal protective equipment. So always want to wear a mask when wiping down the room. So I'll just put that on. Making sure that it is tight up against your nose, leaving an area where you can breathe underneath. Safety glasses. And for videoing purposes, I'm going to actually remove my mask so that you can see what I'm saying. Okay, so infection control, I'm going to start off with Okay, and my mask would be worn consistently throughout. Okay, now that my gloves are placed, I'm going to take some disinfectant wipes. And I'm going to go through a complete wipe down of the room. So I'm going to wipe down the chair. as best as I can. I'm also going to wipe down the lead aprons, both of them, in their entirety along the neck, right along the apron here. There are two aprons here, so I want to wipe down the second one as well. Now that that is wiped down, I'm going to leave it here for now because I do want to handle the lead apron when placing it onto the patient. I do want to handle it with bare hands, but it is clean now. Okay, so I want to continue wiping everything down. And I will move to the x-ray unit. Wiping everything down. Now I want to begin placing barriers. So barriers are placed for every area that I think I'm going to touch. So this includes the computer area. make sure to cover all of the surfaces. Now there are a couple of other barriers that do need to be placed outside the room. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that. barriers across the area where I'm going to be touching to expose the x-rays. And that looks good. Next, I'm going to cover my door handles. So 
so that's set up. Okay, so next I want to grab the lead apron with bare hands. I'm gonna place this on my patient, who is Dexter today. Um, completed the infection control of the radiology room and um, this is also the setup for the radiology room. I do have the x-rays pretty set up here. So these will be the PAs that I will be taking and the bite wings that I'll be taking as in the learning objectives. So bite wing placement and PA placement will be gone over as well. Okay. So now I'm gonna take a clean pair of gloves. And I'm gonna go over bite wing placement. Actually, let's start with the PA placement first. So first off, this is a posterior PA, uh, RIN. Uh, the different parts on the RIN are, this is the bite block, this is the arm, and this is the aiming ring. So really important when setting these up that when the x-ray is placed in the holder that you're able to see the x-ray through the aiming ring. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm going to use a size 2 film, wanting to place the A in the tray, just like that. Okay. So this PA is now set up for quadrant 1 or quadrant 3, and I will go over that. Okay, so on Dexter, I'm going to place this PA for quadrant one. So we'll get Dexter to open his mouth and by, um, by pressing, pressing these two together, this will allow his mouth to go open or closed and to have him bite down, we just um, um, close it into place. Okay, so I'm gonna set up here for a posterior PA and because it's a maxillary PA, I'm also placing my arm here on the, um, the bite block closest to me. That allows more room for the palate and better placement, so I'm not going to distort the tooth when I'm taking the x-ray. So I'm going to go ahead and place that and get Dexter to bite down, making sure that my aiming ring is going to see the x-ray, which it will. And so now I'm going to take my x-ray head and because I'm taking a PA, I can use what is called a collimator. So the collimator is right over here. Really important that because I'm taking a posterior PA with a size 2 film, it's horizontally placed. So I want to make sure that my collimator is placed horizontally as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so now I want to line up the tube head with the aiming ring, making sure that the aiming ring and the tube head are completely perpendicular to each other. So and the angulation, uh, the vertical angulation is not tilted. It needs to be completely straight. Okay, so that looks good. And that would be a successful posterior PA. And now I'm gonna show you how this can be interchangeable with the third quadrant. As you can see, it is set up for the first quadrant. And if I just 
flip this around, now it is now ready to be used for the third quadrant. I would just move the arm closer to the edge of the bite block because it is now on the mandible. The A is still in the tray. We'll just reposition. I would be using a new film for this. So I would have exposed this one. I would have gone outside the room, made sure that the, the, the room door is closed at all times. And it is very important that um, when you go outside to expose the x-ray, that you're watching your patient, making sure that nobody is moving. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this, just move over here. And we will just try to place this in Dexter's mouth. And Dexter's not cooperating. Okay, well, you get the point. Now I'll go over how to take for the uh, second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So now I'm just moving, moving the arm over, and of course moving the aiming ring so that I can see the film through. So now this would be ready for the second quadrant as well as the fourth quadrant. I would have to move this arm this way to allow for the fourth quadrant being in the mandible. Okay? So now I will go over the anterior, the anterior PA placement. So as you can see, the ring looks a little bit different. We do still have an aiming ring. We have an arm, but the bite block looks a little bit different. So this is meant for a size one film. So we'll be using that today. Again, the A in the tray. And if the X-ray or the PSP doesn't want to sit firmly in the slot, sometimes you can use a bite tab and um, add a little bit of, it'll add a little bit of extra so that the X-ray will, will stay snugly in, in place. Okay, so this is an anterior rim. It is meant for X-rays um, from the, the canine to the canine on the top and on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that. So I'm actually gonna place for the the upper anterior. So I'm going to center that. So here I am centering that on the two upper centrals. I'm getting Dexter to bite down enough to hold it firmly in place, knowing that my ring is in the right position to see the film on the other side. Now, really important, I do have a collimator on this, um, on this x-ray head that I do I can just switch around so it needs to be vertical mimicking the same shape as the x-ray behind the aiming ring really important or else you will not get the entire x-ray in the image so now I'm just going to go ahead and line that up making sure that all of my angles are perpendicular this angle here completely parallel, as well as the tube head is going to be completely perpendicular to the aiming ring. And that looks good. Making sure that this is still, I would then exit the room once again and uh, take, take the x-ray. So for different x-rays, there are different settings on the panel. So you'd have to uh, watch that. Make sure that you are uh, picking the right setting for either an upper or a lower, an anterior or posterior. And um, shutting the door each time I expose and um, having a look to make sure that the patient isn't moving. Okay, so let's um, move on to bite wings. So bite wings are a little bit different. We're not gonna use a holder. So it's a size two film, and what I've done here is placed a tab in the middle of the film, not in the middle of the, the envelope that the film is sitting in, 
I want to make sure that it is in the center of the actual film. So if I just have a look here, that's pretty close. That's in the middle. The patient's going to bite down on this tab. So being on this side here, let's start with this side. Okay, so we're going to get Dexter to open and I'm going to take an anterior bite wing. So what that means is I'm going to place the film so that I'm going to see the distal half of the canine, which I will, and I'm going to have Dexter bite down on that. Great. Very important that your patient, the occlusal plane here is parallel to the floor as best you can. With Dexter, it's a little bit more of a challenge, but that's why I have a Kleenex box here just to keep that parallel. For bite wings, we do not need the collimator, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. Now, there are some criteria with bite wings that we do need to be aware of. First of all, the degree of, of angulation here needs to be between 8 and 10 degrees. So let's have a look here. That's about right. So once this angulation has been set, I don't actually want to move that again. I want to be careful not to move that angle. Now for an anterior bite wing, I am looking to open up the contact in between uh, the first and second premolar. So after I've determined my 8 to 10 degree angle here, I want to have my tube head be completely perpendicular to the, um, the buccal surface of the teeth. making sure not to come in at too much of an angle where I'm going to overlap, overlap my teeth. I also want to make sure that I'm not too anterior or too posterior. I want the edge of my film to make it into the tube head because if it doesn't, I'm going to cone cut my x-ray. This also needs to be in the middle. So the maxillary arch and the mandibular arch need to be in the middle of the tube head. And that looks, that looks good. So I have a nice angle this way. I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna capture my film this way. I've, I've got 50% making sure that I have the maxillary arch and the mandibular arch within the tube head. So at this point, I would again go outside and expose that x-ray and have a look at my patient through the window, making sure that they don't move. Okay.